Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Ah. Okay, so there was a thing I wanted to do and <laughs> didn't happen, and it made me very disappointed. In any case, it's April 3rd, 2022. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 642. Okay, so here's what I did want to do if it will work this time. Instead of playing our regular theme, I was okay. going to, to 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 play this if it'll work. Come on, play it. I'm not playing. Let me try this again. Rolling with the homies. Oh, I'm gonna have to find it. I was gonna, gonna instead of playing the regular theme, I was gonna play the 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 old CeeLo movies theme as an April Fool's joke, and it just ah. Uh, now it's not playing. Uh, it's on my Dropbox, but for some reason, I can't make the sword right now. In any case. <laughs> It's that time of the month, uh, and uh, that reminds me, uh, I totally forgot to add a few things. Because <laughs> I even started the thing. Uh, 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 it's no, where is it? I don't know. Hey, it's what's going on, and I don't have my set effects. Gary, <laughs> what's been going on? Uh, well, or actually, no, this is, I don't know what's going on. I got confused because all the things are fucked up. <laughs> you are so discombobulated. I don't know what's going on in any case. Oh, yeah. No, no. Uh, hey, yay. What's going on? Because I can't find <laughs> it. Hey, it's yeah, not in there, yeah. right? It's not in there. Yeah. Right what? It should be. Hey, hey. I mean, it's probably in the folder. I need to find it and re edit hey. it because I had to reinstall everything a couple weeks ago. And I Oh, that's that. right. Oh. Oh, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, again, procrastination is the theme of this month um, <laughs> as you go into your thoughts yes so one of the things uh is uh we're returning to office it was scheduled for tomorrow and i received a text from my uh manager today saying hey the desks aren't set up yet so um no we're work for home for one more week we'll be we'll, we'll do it next week one more week then we'll go back to the office and like, one more week oh great okay because just on Saturday, I finally uh, decided to call AAA and see if they could jumpstart my car or something to get it working, and they couldn't, so I had to have it towed to a shop, and it's currently still in the shop and right now, so fortunately, I don't have a class, so while I'm still working from home, I can be online, ready for work, doing some other Yes, nothing, anything that I can't step away to go pick up a car, everything. So I have a working car for next week, so I have a little more time. But I didn't find out about that until today. So I was really procrastinating. I should have done that the week before. Because <laughs> if we were returning, yes. I would still need a lift to work anyways. But mm. instead of just getting a lift to work and then a lift to, to the, the uh, repair shop and then pick up my car and right back to work yes now it's just a lift to the repair shop to pick it up so a little bit less money but there's that 
Mm-hmm. Um, so just been Maybe procrastinating. Uh, I finally did laundry. Uh, at least a batch. Um, so that I can go into work with clean clothes. You mean like for the first time in two years? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like. <laughs> Gary. Gary. <laughs> Gary, just I haven't no. had to go anywhere. Just, just no, no. <laughs> just much, much less wear much in clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just... I'm probably actually after picking up the dealership, I realized that I probably need, need new new socks and underwear, so I'll probably pick that up from Target on my way back from the repair shop. Because I'm not that picky about my underwear and socks. Maybe see about some new shoes. I haven't, haven't really worn my shoe shoes in a long time either. Because, you know, going into the office, they require those closed-toed shoes, and all I've been doing is walking around with my sandals. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, um, a lot of procrastination that I'm finally kind of picking up on. Finally, for the first time since I installed them, uh, use the... Uh, uh, use use the app in order to pay for my laundry at my my building apartment because they put that in about two years ago uh figured out how that works uh realized the dryers actually don't automatically start you have to press a button to start them um while the washers automatically start once i pay for it it starts for the for the washers doesn't do that for the dryers that is interesting that... So I actually double paid for my drying today because I had to had to push a button um, to, to to get it going. Wait, wait, wait. So you put in the money mm. and it started the counter, like the clock, but it didn't start well, tumbling th- and funny drying? It, yeah, there's the funny thing is because I went back uh, for my laundry and, um, well, besides the fact that it wasn't moving uh, because it didn't start. Like when I, when I did it, um, right. uh, I, I did the thing. Uh, I thought, oh, maybe it has to warm up. And I just kind of walked away or something instead of like sticking around, making sure that started. Uh, but it, the machine itself will just keep going. I... There, there might be a problem there that I'm not uh, that I'm not one hundred percent aware of, but. Close, I'm sorry. Right. I, 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 I might be able to just throw it in there, hit the start button, and not even pay. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, because the dryers work, it's just they don't automatically start after I scan the QR uh, code and and put pay at pay. Hmm. Only a buck fifty I'm each. Very so confused. Now, is it more expensive using the app, or do you save money on using the technology yeah, versus the same quarters? Thing. About the same. Hmm. From what I remember. I haven't done laundry in a while. Okay. Cool. Hmm. Well, it's kind of funny because, I mean, today we went to um, a new place to have our cast party after the chorus. So I'll talk about the I'll talk about the concert in April when we do what's going on in April. Because <laughs> it technically was this weekend. But um, we had our cast party tonight and we went to this new place. And you basically scan a QR code. It pulls up a menu. You you can order everything in the on the on the site, and then you pay for it, and they'll deliver it to you, like to the seat that you're sitting in, because your the QR code is based on where you're sitting. It's kind of an interesting concept. I wasn't sure how I felt about it, but it was it was surprisingly quick. And you can set a tab so you don't you can sit there the whole time and keep the tab open, as it were, and, and mm. get multiple drinks or food or whatever and not have to worry about it. Um, so I, was just, it, it I could see that being a very interesting concept. Hmm. So, yeah. Anyway. Anything else, Jeff? Well, uh, just the standard... A lot of Final Fantasy fourteen and uh, I've been doing some crafting in there instead of 
lead my battle jobs and does uh, some really great uh uh D. Mm. And Saturdays and then then okay D D on Thursdays and then uh okay D D on Wednesdays. And you you can all watch what I do on Thursdays on a playlist on our channel. YouTube channel. Ah. Uh-huh. Or watch it live at twitch.tv slash windjam on about eight o'clock in central time on Saturday on Thursdays. Uh huh. So there you go. Pretty standard, normal, not very exciting. Damon, how about you? Cool. Cool. Well, speaking of D and um, I got back with my semi regular group on um this month, this past month, um. We did a really good, really adventure. It's just a smaller group that someone's home that we play at, and I'm kind of really enjoying it. And we've been playing for, I want to say, two, three years, if not longer now. It's been a while. I'd have to look to figure that out. But it's been going, it's been ongoing. It's an ongoing, like, homebrewed campaign. So really enjoying that. Um, on a different note, um, uh, Jim and I have left one of our reg- our regular D and D groups up at the comic book shop. Um, uh, there was an incident during one of our last sessions uh, with a um, player who was choosing to make some rather off color, borderline, actually pretty fucking racist um, jokes. Mm-hmm. wasn't Didn't believe that they were as bad and um and it it was kind of this player has been someone who has been problematic in the past for me and jim um and because we don't like his behavior overall and this was kind of the straw that broke the back and it was a pretty big straw um so we left that game um more so because it just it it wasn't gonna work and I would would have liked to have happened something else, but that didn't happen. So mm. it's a shame. But you know, uh, the DM's got to be. Sometimes your DM has to be um, somewhat impartial, at least just in a certain extent. And although it was the first, it was apparently the first incident that he had heard of. So whatever. Anyway. So we're no longer playing in that, and that, that game's going to still go on because they've got plenty of people playing it, if whatever. So there you go. Um, the other thing that happened this month um, is one thing I'm kind of really happy about. Um, uh, so for those who don't know, um, there is a leather organization called Onyx, um, O-N-Y-X. Um, it is for um, leather men of color, and it is a... Um, national organization um they have different chapters um throughout the united states um that um have pledging and memberships for full and associate members and um i have decided to join the onyx great lakes version um as an associate member so i'm not a full member mostly because i have a lot on my plate right now and I don't know if full membership is going to be doable because in order to pledge you have to pledge and you have to go through about six months of education and um, going to the all uh, pretty much all the events and working the events and being there and then you eventually get pulled from a become a full member if you make it through the pledging um um, route. So um, I do not have that capacity currently. So I felt, but I still wanted to be involved and I still wanted to um, learn more about this organization and be a part of it because I feel like it's important and necessary. Um, so um, I joined in an associate. I got accepted. I went to Detroit um, a few weeks ago 
Um, thank you to um, Derek and his partner for coming and um, coming through Cincinnati to come pick me up to take me to Detroit and taking bringing me home afterwards. Um, it was a good time. It was a very busy weekend. It was a very packed weekend, but I did become an associate member, got accepted. I interviewed and it got accepted. You interview in front of the full membership um, and anyone can ask you a question. It's a little bit more um, like hard, I would say harder, but that's not the exact word for someone who's going for a full membership as opposed to an associate membership. But I still did have the interview and they still had to accept. So they did. And yeah. now I am a member. So I am Umbra Onyx. Um, I've decided to kind of keep that name with that one, with this group. And um, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. They actually have um, an event later this, I have a couple of events later this month. So I don't know if I'll be able to make those, but I'm going to try. Yeah, that's me. Gary. Well, I'm sorry to hear that uh, that group change happened um, yeah. in terms of gaming, although um, I have not gamed in uh, roughly 30 years mm -hmm. um, in terms of like uh, an RPG, but when i did um our dm put up with none of that mm -hmm. like made it abundantly clear like this is an open like communal space we're here to have fun we're going to be crude we're going to be raunchy like it's going to yeah. be very adult and yet at the same time like no one is allowed to put anybody else down and if anybody says anything that's completely out of line you'll just be called on it right then and, and then yeah so yeah and and to to add on, the DM has kind of mentioned that, that, that like it was a safe space and no one should ever be, he would try his best to make sure that no one feels, you know, that way. Um, this was essentially an incident where, um, well, to be blunt, um, the joke was being told and the DM was not paying attention. Like he was working on something else. He was, you know, fiddling with stuff and he wasn't really paying attention. He wasn't really listening. Um, and it was... The, the joke was cringy at best to begin with. It was kind of inappropriate considering what we were doing. But again, most of us there are adults. However, we are in, this isn't an at-home, you know, D&D &D version. This right. was in a comic book shop. And one of the players, to my knowledge, and I have to believe is was under the age of 18. So one of the players is a minor. Mm -hmm. And that's where kind of part of my issue came from, was this joke wasn't really appropriate considering who was there. And then um, there was also the very racial undertones that were a part of it, too. Um, uh, and the person who said who made the joke didn't seem to understand why it was, at least at first, didn't get that it was offensive. Right. Um, they were just repeating something that they had seen on TikTok. So um, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, it just, you know, but and again, like I said, the DM wasn't really, unfortunately, wasn't paying attention. And um, while his girlfriend also plays, um, his girlfriend is also very much of a, like, not always there. Sounds bad. She has, um, she sometimes gets migraines, so she's sometimes not always as attentive because she needs to kind of, like, she's kind of fighting that part of it, too. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the player did apologize in the scene and I told them why it was a problem. Um, and then like the DM said, well, maybe do you want him to leave? And I was like, at that moment in time, I really just wanted to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I kind of said, let's just keep going. And, but the more I thought about it, the worse it started bothering me and then kind of went from there. So message the DM and kind of went from there. Um, as I said, this wasn't the first time, but it was the first time I've kind of really, really told him, like, point blank, this person did something, blah, blah, blah. And right. so, so he had, he was in his, 
quote unquote rights to keep the player in the game because this is the first incident and he probably talked to him separately about it because the guy ended up reaching out to me because we're friends on Facebook. Um, but uh, it was it was disheartening because you know I'm the one that now has to step away and not do something I enjoy doing because I'd rather avoid and not be with someone who doesn't seem to understand when no means no or stop means stop mm. or don't means don't. So, anywho. Yeah, it can be a, a challenging dynamic, you know, to have people and um, I guess the, the biggest thing is like, are they willing to make amends? Like show in their actions, you know, um, a desire or an interest to attempt to change. Um, and if you're not really seeing that or that's not coming forward, then it makes it difficult on what you want to do next and how you want to proceed. Yeah. With that kind of stuff. Yeah. We'll so con congrats on Onyx. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to hearing more about like what your experience is with that and how that uh, goes. Big old thing of bylaws right here. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Too much work about it. <laughs> my opinion. That's me. Yeah, I mean, being a part of an organization, you know, um, potentially being in a leadership position or even just volunteering, like there's there's a lot of yeah. aspects that I think people don't realize or pay attention to, and and there are plenty of entities that don't have this kind of a structure. Like they don't have a board, they don't have bylaws, you know, they don't have like dues or so on and so forth, which is fine. I find that some amount of structure and guidance that's like documented can be incredibly helpful on what to do um, in certain circumstances, but you can't account for everything as we've seen heck over the past five years, um, certain, you know, LGBTQ sectors are adapting or adjusting, trying to evolve with the changing landscape of just American society and how certain things are not acceptable. And they couldn't have predicted um, easily what these changes and attitudes are going to be. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you need to do something. Damon and I had this conversation recently. It's like, do you do you leave something because you just don't feel that they're going to make the right choice and do the thing that needs to be done? Or do you try to make change from within? And it's very difficult to be a change agent in an environment where you don't feel like that's going to be uh, accepted or possible and what to do with that. So yeah, it, it, it takes time. And, and also it's very difficult for people who are involved in something to see the trees for the forest. Like if you're in the midst of it, it can be a little difficult to understand and comprehend like an outside perspective, because I think more often than not, we tend to dismiss and be like, yeah, but you weren't there or you're not like, you're not, a, you're not part of the decision-making process or whatever it is. And it's like, yeah, but well, that's, that may be true. That doesn't negate an experience. So, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying it's not, some, not a type of group that I would join in <laughs> just because I think it's way too complicated for me. For me. For me. For me. Right. And sometimes that's the way it is. Sometimes yeah. if it's not your thing, it's not your thing, which is yeah, true. It's not my thing. Anyways. So, Gary, yeah. what about you? Um, uh, yet again, unpredictable weather. Uh-uh. Um, I don't think I've ever phrased it this way before, but, you know, I'm pretty sure I've made disparaging comments about a non-sentient, questionably existing entity called Mother Nature. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, this month, yet again, we saw the typical, like, oh, it's going to be in the 60s, you know, and so people are celebrating by wearing shorts and T-shirts, you know, and no jackets and that kind of mm. stuff. And then, you know, the very next day. Not even 24 hours later, we got two to three inches of snow on the ground. So, you know, mm. <clears throat> just poses so, a challenge. Yes. Yeah. So kind of the same here. Jeff, has it been like up and down where you are? 
Yeah, a little bit different, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Because remember, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a Minnesota boy who's living in Texas. So yeah. this entire time has been t-shirts and shorts weather. Um, it's just, you know, 81 part of the day, and then in the evening it goes down to 50. Yeah. Uh, I think we yeah. were we, we hit the 40s the other day. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So uh, same experience, but slightly different. But yeah, different. I can't remember who where it was. Somebody in the southwest, maybe they posted pictures of snow. They were like, they were like, we got snow. Like they weren't celebrating, but at the same time, they were kind of like, we got snow. Like this doesn't happen often. <laughs> This is the past couple I weeks. remember during one of my my previous jobs down here down here it started snowing and and one of my coworkers was looking out the window and she had this like childlike like wonder appearance <sighs> and I'm like oh it's snowing <laughs> <laughs> right oh I, I think when you when you've not had an experience before it can it could potentially be magical. But you, I think the rest of us, we kind of take it for granted if you've grown up with it or had previous experiences. It just doesn't, it's not the same. It doesn't hit the same way, you know. I remember when we would have our lawns and our our side, our our, uh, our lawns had a pile of snow that was up as large as me. And that was only five feet at the time. Yeah. I remember walking down the street in the cold, in the snow, uphill, both ways, with <laughs> potatoes in our shoes to keep our feet warm. <laughs> what are you showing, David? Hold We're on. trying to show. I have to do this first. Let's okay. change background. Oh. Turn this off. There we go. So that was March 11th at my was, house. Yeah, I was outside say, my house. Next door, yeah. Yeah. Man, oh man! And, and people again, say that climate change is a myth. I was talking about it recently when I was a kid. Around my, <laughs> there we go. David and the Great Disappearing Act. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, around my birthday in November is usually when we got our first snowfall for the winter, and and then it just would stay. <laughs> and so you would have a good solid four months of snow, possibly up at, up into five. And that's just the way it was. Mm -hmm. And over the past decade, I've noticed that we've gotten to the trend now where like we get a snow in November. We might get a snow in December, but the snow goes away. And then the snow really starts in January. And it doesn't usually end until the beginning of March. And then it, by this time, it's it's gone. So we've, we've pretty much halved the winter as far as the weather aspect goes, which is very interesting. So at another 10 to 20 years, I'll be like, oh, we may just not really have snow at all anymore. So or very little of it, which will be a, an unfortunate thing. So we, we shall see where that goes. Um, but yeah, so the, the weather's unpredictable. I don't know. It, and it affects my mood, you know. Just like, mm -hmm. I just want to. Well, and then we had the time change because, mm -hmm. yay, because we're silly here in America. Um, I heard there's a bill out to, to, to abolish that. I don't know for sure. No, I, I won't, it won't happen. <laughs> I won't see it happen until it actually happens. So I wanna... it's going to make the daylight savings time permanent. Yeah. So, in other words, we don't have the transition anymore. Yeah. Correct. That's basically so what, I mean. it, what it will do is it will shift us into the savings time year round. So like, right, you know, it, it will stop the back and forth thing for those parts of the country that like move ahead or move back an hour mm -hmm. during the year. It will make it theoretically permanent. Now, what I find interesting about it is that someone drew a very nice graph and I wish I knew what it was because I would have brought it. I would have brought it to class and shared it. Um <laughs> But someone graphed the continental U.S. and what that does in terms of daylight. And I thought it was interesting because so the, the U.S. gets sliced on a curve across mm -hmm. the continent um, from east to west coast. And at the edges of each like slice, 
they they shaded it and they were showing like who would be affected by the most amount of sun or the least amount of sun, like the sunrise. Like and it had to do with like especially when we get to winter and mm-hmm. how like in some areas the sun would not rise until like 10 a.m. Um and so like I think the upper um peninsula, the UP of Michigan maybe parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Like, it was kind of interesting. They were trying to say, like, yeah, like, most of the country probably won't notice too much of a change. Mm. But certain parts will definitely, like, see, you know, like, (laughs) they will already be up and doing things for hours before the sun actually rises. So, wow. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I was like, oh, hmm." but I agree. Well, we'll see how that plays out when the time change, like if it if it becomes permanent. I don't have very much hope for for things passing through Congress at the moment. Just you know, yeah. the idea of people putting aside their political ideologies and just you know voting on shit because it's in the best interest of everybody is a whole other issue. Yeah, but then it's like, I mean, then they think it's like, well, I hate it during the spring when I lose an hour of time. Well, I mean, I, you like, know. <laughs> Like, but I do enjoy the thing, and then it's kind of like this weighing back and forth of, yeah. But then in the fall, there's that extra hour of sleep I get. Uh, how how would I, do, how do I change that? And just stopping it. There was a reason why, and I think similar to what you were talking about, that we started it to begin with. Um, but I think with modern technologies and everything, I don't think it matters that much anymore. Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of difficult. It's just like um, I recently learned about a different way to look at the calendar and it's been obsessing me a little bit since then. And I'm like, oh, but America is so not ready for this. The world is not ready for this, technically. Um, but I was like, wow, that's pretty. That's pretty simplistic. Um so one of the beefs that I have is because I because of my part time job, like we're constantly talking about calendar and dates. And the issue is, is when things are done to the month. So, like, for instance, April 1st started on a Friday. And if you say that you get something for the month of April, it means it lasts from Friday the 1st through Saturday the 30th. Mm. But when payroll schedules don't match the month. And payroll schedules typically run, in most cases, Sunday through Saturday or a different setup, then you end up in this weird thing where like a pay period, a a pay week will have part of a month and part of another month. Mm -hmm. And so it causes this whole like consternation issue because like someone didn't calculate and they didn't think this thing out, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't really explained. Math isn't their thing, whatever. So I think of this all the time. And I was like recently made aware of what's called a media type calendar. And I found that very interesting because it divides the year into 13 months, theoretically. 13 four-week cycles. So if you take 13 and you multiply it by four weeks, you get 52 weeks in a year. So instead of there being theoretically 12 months, there's 13 how many days is that? Uh, what do you mean? Like, well, there's so seven, then multiply by seven. seven. The eight times 13 is 364. So it's not perfect. Nothing's dun, perfect because, you know, dun, dun, when, when God made Earth, God kind of goofed. Anyways, um, <laughs> God didn't make this, though. Let's just put that. Let's just drop that. <laughs> off the let's just drop that well right I'm, I'm referencing the science of the rotation of the sun of the moon and la 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 anyways oh that but one. my whole point is like the simplicity of there being 13 four-week cycles i was like what because i've said this to people i was like imagine if every month the first was a sunday like and the 14th was a saturday throw off my pay period because my pay period is saturday through friday <laughs> well, no, 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 but like, just listen, like if every month was repeatable, if you knew every single month that the sixth was the first Friday of the month, like David's shaking his head, like, like to me, there's yeah. such a simplicity to it. Cause you just know this number is this day of the week, every single month, all year long. Like you don't have to really 
think about it. Mm. Um, and so if you need something to happen on the fifth of the month, the fifth is always going to be the fifth and the fifth will always be Thursday. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Like, like yeah. it, it's just this thing that you kind of can rely on as opposed to a constant floating, shifting, moving. Is it this? Is it that? Now, yes, we would still have the anomaly of the leap year because we have to account for that and the other thing. But anyways, so it's just a little thing I've obsessed with recently because I was like, what? And, and, and like, we're sure to get every year. So. Yeah. Because it's 365 so, and that's counting for 364, but it's really 365 point whatever it is, which is the reason why we have the leap years. And right. then every so often the one leap year is not a leap year. No, I, I agree. Like, it, it's not a perfect system. Heads, I, I, I was making the crack that God has made an imperfect plan because if it was all that mystical, then the earth would nature, actually rotate. Perhaps nature is chaotic. Specific thing. And it's no, I know. So uh, I'm just going off on a whole tangent ramble about the calendar because I was I just keep thinking about the simplicity of like, but I was like, oh, not this is the US, the whole world would have to agree to a whole new calendar. Like we'd have to add a 13th month and woo. I bet that would be difficult um, because then we'd be going back to the whole like, well, is it going to be, you know, like the Julian calendar, like, but modified, like, how are, then, then, then. anyways, and we have enough issues in the world as is right now trying to get everybody on the same page. For so, example, the United States is still two, four, two, one, nine, nine days. Thank you. Uh, for example, the United States is still using the imperial system of measurement versus metric. Right, right. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Anyway, long story short, Tangents. reality is wonky. Science to, tries to make sense of it. Ta-da! Rather sucks. All right, are we ready to move on? <laughs> yes. All right. Fortunately, during this entire time, I found the clips. <laughs> Quick proof that I found all the clips. I only have one clip to other clip to, to play today, so I'll play that when the time comes. Anyways, Gary, <laughs> what's going on over in the Facebooks? I'm glad you got Janet back, because damn it, we appreciate Janet, her. <laughs> I love you. It's Miss Janet. Miss Miss Jackson, if you nasty. Anyways, oh, um, I, Jackson, I quoted a musical reference. Didn't know if you got this. Okay, no, no, I got it. I just didn't okay. pick up what you put down. That's all. <laughs> okay, all okay. right. Moving on. What's going on over the Facebook? No, no, no. It's okay. okay. No, no, no. David and I have this like little little jivey thing that goes back and forth. If you've listened to CML Drag Race, you would understand that like how like sometimes this thing is a little hypocritical how she talks about how like she doesn't eat the chocolate and then she proceeds to sit through the episode and eat chocolate. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> oh, no, she getting the chocolate bar out. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Go ahead. You your Werther's in, in the matinee on a Sunday, ma'am. So... <laughs> From Facebook, we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us. Gary Nicholas Petroso, Scott Merrick. Hey, girl. Uh, Howard Nong. And I probably pronounced your name incorrectly. My apologies. Uh, Bill Zanowitz, Chuck Brewster, Mark Montgomery, AC Adam, Carrie Onyx, or Kari Onyx, perhaps, Jed Bear Thompson, and Timmy Crawford. Damon, did you get us more listeners? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't wait. Um Well, okay, so when I joined so when I joined Onyx, I had an influx of friend requests. Mm -hmm. And I accepted several. So it's possible that some of them knew that and then knew saw the podcast and yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. So thanks to them. Uh, awesome. Miss Damon. Yeah. Over mm -hmm. in the YouTube land. Sure, we got a couple of comments. So on um, COL 639, which was our Let's Talk About Food, the bacon episode, Bobby Miller replied and said, Hi guys, great subject, bacon. 
And then bacon flavored lube, no. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby, for affirming my belief on that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then on Seal Well 640, which was our landscape of relationships, chosen family, um, Din Din replied, um, chosen family is a privileged concept. I think of as a, quote, re- our parentheses, remote support group based on choice, circumstances, shared interest. It is very difficult to make one and sustain it. This is, this is a, well, he didn't say is. This is a very difficult subject as people don't know how to value friend, family, friends, acquaintances, etc. Huh. I know. I, I've been thinking about this since I read it. Um, Mm -hmm. and put it into the doc. I never presumed, but I don't think Dindin's wrong. I never thought about chosen family as a privilege because I presumed that everyone would have the ability to, I guess, discover their own tribe. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's one of those things when it comes to chosen family is it the the chosen family just kind of develops naturally on its own. And some mm-hmm. people don't necessarily get that in their life. It doesn't mean that every chosen families aren't necessarily <laughs> something that everybody has It's something that everybody can have um, if they develop the relationships. But um, that comes as a natural occurrence. And how people feel about other people and their their relationships. If you've had a yeah. friend who you've been uh, frequently in touch with oh, over several years, decades, maybe um, uh, that might be somebody who's actually part of your chosen family. Maybe your chosen family is just two people, best best friends, you know, sort of thing, um, yeah. or it's somebody that you just ended up really clicking with not something in a romantic way, but in a platonic friendship way. And it hasn't, maybe it hasn't been very long. They could be one as long as it's a a relationship they sustain, but it's not something you specifically like actively choose. You are now part of my family. It, it just kind of develops. Uh, So the terminology chosen family may be a little off, but, uh, but I think, it's still apropos because you yeah. do subconsciously, if anything, choose to have these people as a big part of your life. Yeah. It's not I, really an active thing is what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. I wasn't on the episode when I think we had that this conversation. Um, but I do tend to think that, um, you know, I think I, what I'm, what I think Dindin is getting to, is due to potentially certain um, inabilities to be as out or engaging with others as they can be, they may have difficulty making those connections to create those organic families, which I I think, I guess I can understand that could potentially come from a place of a privilege of some kind um, where you have access to um, an unrestricted internet. I'll put that as an option, you know, or mm-hmm. you have access to a quote unquote safe space that you can go to uh, where you can be who you are and find your, you know, friends there. So I think that may be what he's going at. And I can understand that. Um, I don't know if you'll hear this, but I, I, I think I understand what you mean. And I get what you're saying, Gaff, too. Like it, it, when I think about like my quote unquote chosen family and to kind of put it into perspective, Jim and I are having that conversation right now as we're trying to decide who do we want to invite to the fucking wedding. Um, <laughs> like that's the thing. Like I go through my head and I'm thinking like, who are people that I would want to invite and family? I kind of already have the, like the real, like, like a real blood family. I kind of have already the small pool of people I think I want to invite from my family. Beyond that, which would be my chosen family, there are so many possibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the good and bad thing as we're as I'm dealing with this now, that I have all these people who I'm either acquainted with or friends with um, that I would want to maybe be there. 
and Jim as well. And, you know, when you've been together as long as we have as well, like you have that too. Like there are people who have been with you, you know, since you were together and it'd be kind of odd to like, be like, Oh, no, you can't come. Sorry. We don't have room for you. That just feels off. But then kind of figure out how to narrow it down. So anyway. All right. No, I, I, I mean, I, I appreciate what did didn't say. And Jeff, I think you bring up an interesting point that like, not everyone is active in choosing, like selecting their chosen family members. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe that's really where the privilege lies. Um, you may just, you know, build really strong bonds with people and not think of it in, the, in that kind of terminology. Also, I, I think it's interesting that Dindin says, you know, sustain. And that's very true. I've had plenty of people who have come and gone through the course of my, my life path. Um, I have uh, two individuals that I consider very good slash best friends, um, actually, well, three or four now, um, <laughs> that are, that are no longer really involved in my life. Um, you know, three of them, I very specifically made a decision to not interact with them anymore. Um, mm. I just felt that we weren't on the same page. Mm. Um, I felt like in one circumstance, it was a pretty toxic, like, friendship mm -hmm. um and i was like i can't have that kind of energy and that like i can't be feeding into this like mm -hmm. i don't have the time i don't have the bandwidth i don't have the energy for this so while you may have been considered like someone at one time i might have thought part of my chosen family that is the thing about the the thing of it being chosen because i could choose you to not be a part of this <laughs> like this grouping or whatever for me mm -hmm. um but yeah like i i get that you know it, it is difficult um, and we talk about that, at least I think in America, we kind of make references like sometimes you have bonds with people um, that are really good, but you may not see each other that often. And so you might feel like you're failing and sustaining that friendship. And then so much time goes by and you like you reconnect with them. And then sometimes like you just pick up like nothing happened, like like there was no gap. And um, so you might feel like you weren't really sustaining this this like bond and yet you're both cool. Like, you know what I mean? And, and there's been no real change. Both get so. back together, start talking up the storm, catching up. And yeah. friendship wise, it's still the same friendship, uh, but it's, it's something that's natural. Uh, uh, a lot of the times so it's something that just kind of happens. Um, so I can kind of understand. I just, I don't feel like privilege is really the right word for it. Um, because I don't think it's necessary because privilege means that only these people to me, my personal definition, just me. I'm going to vote to indicate it's just me um, that it's it, it's something where anybody can have it. It's anybody. It, it's just finding those right connections and having those right connections being having the ability to go out and make those connections. Some people just won't be able to do it. I don't think, but as, as I said, some people will just never have a chosen family and that's mm -hmm. not, that's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that happens. Um, uh, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily privileged because it's a possibility for everyone. Um, in, it's just other factors are preventing you from having it, but I wouldn't say that's necessarily a privilege because some people with privileges for other cases just may not be able to enact their privileges in one shape, way, shape, or form just because of other things that are in the way. Mm. So it, I, I don't like the word privilege in this matter. It, I think is the case. It's, I get what you're trying to go for, uh, but I don't think privilege is the right word. Okay. And let's move on. All right. Over on the Twitterverse, we've got Irish audit, Irish underscore audit, barely alium, Al barely alium, maybe one. Uh, into it all three, a Pnasu, eight zero two seven three seven zero one, uh, Neckelbear four. I guess three one three and Eduardo six one four 
nine three four two six. And you know what I how I feel about having <laughs> the long string of numbers. A number I'm okay with. <clears throat> Maybe a couple digits I'm okay with. A couple extra numbers you probably don't need. Anyways. I'm waiting for the day when someone explains why they have a long series of numbers. <laughs> I'm just saying, because I think I agree. Like, I was like, how do you make that decision? I'm just curious. So if I'm not mistaken, if you just like join Twitter, like I'm just going to make up a Twitter account and here's my email address, yada, yada. They assigned you a an ID. Mm -hmm. You can change it. You can always change it. But sometimes that's what it happens. And they just assign you an ID and you get all these numbers. And if you don't care, which is sometimes the case here, that becomes your ID. You can change your name, like the, your title. Yeah, you, you could change the Twitter ID. And you can change the Twitter handle as well. But sometimes you just don't. And you just end up with like such and such one, yeah, two, three, if four, they five, six, go seven, eight, to nine, say that yeah, they're going to assign you that number the first thing you should do is no let me think of a better one <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry I, I mean yes you would i know think, eduardo you are eduardo don't. but do you really want to be considered the six million one hundred forty nine? uh no wait a minute 61 million four hundred ninety third four hundred twenty sixth uh eduardo on twitter I'm sure there's plenty of our waters before you that have somehow changed it. But in any case, wow. I, I only That's use like... his name because it, he's the only like standard name mm -hmm. of the list. So, and I can't think that there are 80,273 uh, or 80,273,701 80 million. Million uh, Panasus. So, could be if that's a common name in say another country. Maybe. But who knows? I, who knows? I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, but, anyway we uh, that, wrong. That's. <laughs> Get a better Twitter handle. Something's more you. Anyways, that's just a side point. Uh, but it's that time of the month, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank our patrons, Gary. Sorry, I was testing a theory. Uh, yes, we want to thank uh, our newest patrons for joining us. Michael Vaughn and Zach Baker joined us at the buddy level in February. Yay! Thank you, patrons. Um, so we'd like to give Big Bear Cub hugs uh, to our patrons. Uh, Charles W. at the Cubster level. Uh, Dave T. Lee. Michael Q, a.k.a. Q, and Tim S. at the Uber level, and then Lloyd, Michael, and Zach, who are our buddies. And by the way, Michael Q joined Patreon on March 14th um, as, I believe, our second patron and has been with us for four years. So. Wow. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Happy Q. Happy patronversary. Thank you can just, I mean, next time I see you, whatever, ooh, that's going to sound awful. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I said, I'm literally going to say whatever you want me to do. I was like, wait, no. Mm, mm -mm. David. Mm. Wow. <laughs> okay, it was. It Putting was a lot out there. It was, I went, I didn't mean it to be that way. I didn't mean it to sound the way it sounded. Mm -hmm. But there we are. So. I'm mm. sure. You will, if he he does take you up on that offer, would be very kind and not say yes. I want you to buy him something. Well, me. <laughs> I go. mean, I would love to get him a sauce from Q. Like I have, I've I've seen his work. Oh, um, child, trust that is on my wish list. Yeah, like I have seen his work, and I know what he can do. Yes, please, and thank you. Like. You will pay for he knows that. how to handle hand, handle the male form. Uh huh. So I'm I'm okay with especially, him putting his hands on me. Especially yes, especially yes, especially, especially the bear form. Of course. Of course. Of course. Absolutely, yeah. I'm a professional. <laughs> 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 oh.
ship. So now all I can do is think Dave. of that. Think of that uh, Simpsons character, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> all right, let's uh, take a review over the what's been going on in the past five weeks in the Cubs Out Loud. Um. Yeah. So, like the last since the last time we did this, uh, six thirty seven was what's going on for the month of February, and then in episode six thirty eight was the Earn It Act two thousand twenty two, where we talked about the new earn it uh, legislation that's going through Congress and the potential ripple effects it could have um, on freedom of expression on the internet. Uh, episode 639, um, we did a Let's Talk About Food, the bacon episode. Mm. Um, and then, uh, and since then, ironically, um, there somewhere there was discussion about microwaving bacon, and it just made me laugh because I was remembering our conversation from the episode mm-hmm. um, and the feelings on that that works. The landscape of relationships, chosen family, um, where Mr. Edward Angelini Cook joined us uh, to discuss um, that idea of having our own tribe, our own local collective. And last week was episode 641, All Tea, No Shade, The Disney Conundrum. And I want to talk a little bit about that um, and just say for our audience and listeners, um, we don't do All Tea, No Shades very often. Um, It's not an ongoing, it is an ongoing series, but it's not a planned thing. It's not like once a month or once every couple of months. It's more kind of like when a hot topic comes up. And with that being said, sometimes... We get very passionate about our perspectives, our opinions, our point of view when we discuss these things. And that happened in the last episode. Um, And so we just, at least I wanted to let the audience know that we're cool. We're good. Um, I will say fine here. Yeah, I will say this. Like we, we got very expressive and opinionated and talked over each other. And that was not the best way to handle things. Um, (laughs) So it was a very passionate feelings oriented episode let me let me let me just do this real quick and see if i can fade away there we go hold on <laughs> oh and then of course <laughs> oh there you go there. no um both david and i uh i don't want to speak on david's behalf i'm owning for myself that um the the uh, ideas i, I think that, he was uh, just... also owning himself by pointing at himself I'm well not sure uh, how well the hands came through the uh, uh green screen but <laughs> It was it was just that we um, when and this is the thing that I talk to people about, like just naturally in life. I'm like, it, sometimes your emotions override your logic. Like mm-hmm. and so like you don't have quorum, you don't maintain yourself in a certain way and you kind of do certain things. And so, you know, sometimes people have to call you out on that and be kind of like, uh, that was that was a bit much like that was harsh or that was over the line or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um and so, you know, you figure out from there how to, you know, address that. And and so that's one of the things that I appreciate about the three of us is that we have that ability mm-hmm. um, in the space and in the time when we feel that that's, you know, the best way how we want to handle something. So basically, if you ever see ATNS appended, appended to the, the start of an episode, just know it's going to go down. And it's going to be <laughs> drama filled. Buckle up, Buttercup. Um, yeah. It's and, be... and, but that's also to say, apologies, Damon. Um, that's also to say that we need to keep ourselves a little bit in check. Yeah. Because ATNS is not a license to just, like, right, like to, to word vomit over others. Like, over others. Yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, what it comes down to is, um, I think we, for the most part, are pretty candid in, in any show, any topic that we have. I feel perhaps when we do an ATNS, um, we feel more empowered to, uh, I don't know, just like, you know, be be more engaged, I guess, or forthcoming but Uh that doesn't give us license to you know be uh, rude in in the art of conversation yes absolutely so yes um to kind of reiterate absolutely all the things all the things Gary said for sure 
Um, and I think we have come up with some in the background for those that know, um, we've kind of discussed some things and I think, well, let me say, I hope the next time we do a show like this, we are more respectful of the space that we are in and more respectful of each other. We need respectful drama. Yes. <laughs> Drama's fine. Yes. But, you know, but there's you a point down it maybe a little be, bit. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it can get to be a little bit too much. And, and I this hope, is not an saying, edited show. This is, this is live to hard drive, baby. Uh, we, we can't <laughs> add out all the drama. This is not RuPaul's Drag Race. This is not RuPaul's best. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But no, again, agree. It's not like real that, ha- housewives of, of, of Orange County. Yeah, there you go. God, this is not The Bachelor. Not The Black Bachelorette. Not Survivor. Yeah, it's not produced for the drama. This is yeah. not The Real World. If anybody remembers that. God, I would love The Real World. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so we will, you know, we will, we've, we've made some steps and we will all... We have all grown from that, and we will, in the future, next time we see an episode, hope you know, again, hopefully, it will be a again, more respectful discussion, mm-hmm. as opposed to um, someone Not pointing at anybody in particular. Yeah, I'm right, using right. my own cameras here. Yeah, Hold on, yeah. let me see if I, Someone I'm pointing. getting no, a little... No, I gotta, sorry, I got to point that way. Getting a little... Somebody blurry. gets on soapboxes and doesn't get off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'm going to take these swords away from y'all because you don't need to be throwing yourselves on them anymore. It's okay. It'll be fine. All right. That's good. Road rules. Oh, yeah. Road oh, rules. Road rules. Oh my god. Oh. That takes me the, back. The old MTV <laughs> MTV <laughs> MTV MTV the, Road rules. Honestly, oh. those were the good days. Uh, of, of reality television. I will put, I will put quotes in because all of those shows are edited <laughs> like a bitch. Well, what's interesting is I think in the very beginning, these concept shows were edited and not really produced. And then I think pretty quickly on a whole industry within entertainment arose that you could produce and edit Mm -hmm. to craft characters and storylines and concepts. Damon and I have discussed this quite a bit with RuPaul's Drag Race, specifically on the COLDR series, because... We it becomes so obvious at certain points. You're like, okay, really? Was that was that necessary? But anyways. Anyways, moving on. Uh I think it's time to go from drama to peen. <laughs> nope. I meant to just stop that. Anyways. So uh Damon, what did you find on Twitter? Oh, we're here. <laughs> yeah. um, so I titled this Disrespect in the Floors. Disrespect in the Floors. I mean, it's a video from Omar at Omar's Beef. Um, I don't know oh, where my. he's at. Um, oh, bye. <laughs> oh, bye. I take it Gary is watching. Um, so he is a very, you know, sexy um, I'm going to assume Puerto Rican um, bear, given the flag in the background. Um, dick all over. And um, he is jerking off. He's drinking a beer and jerking off. And he comes a lot. Um, like a oh. lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and he mm-hmm. is um, he's 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 hot. I've I've been following him for I followed him before, and I think this is a different profile. But um, uh, he is gorgeous AF. I think he's in Chicago. 
um, yeah, Chicago and, um, uh, yeah, just, you know, explosion all over the, the floor. Yeah. Good thing it was Mm -hmm. tile. Uh Uh-huh. I hope it wasn't like a tile spot and then some carpet was just off camera. Hmm. I don't think so. Because he got some distance on that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't, again, I don't know where this was taken. Um, I feel like it was, I almost feel like it was maybe like a, a bar or a bathhouse or kind of thing, but it could also just be his house for all we know. Um, yeah. I mean, it could just be his bathroom. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fun, good, mm. lots and yeah, lots of lots of lots of things happening, and and um, he's he's just a handsome man and yeah. Okay, that's my fifth time watching. I should probably turn it off. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Good times. Good, good, fun times. Sexy. Yeah, fucker. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Gary? Um, so I titled mine POV Hidden Cam. The actual uh, video caption slash title is POV, I found your dressing room camera. Oh. And so Scruffy Cub Chris is in a changing room, dressing room. Um, at a store, I don't know which store it is necessarily, but um, he undresses, oh. but it's all explicitly to the camera. Oh. Huh. Ha ha ha. And he gets down to his uh, undies, and then he decides to show off a little. Um, oh, and, it, and, and it like there a, it goes. Uh-huh, and it's haunting, kind of teasing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. look at you! Just mm-hmm. a little tease, just mm-hmm. a little bit of a, just a little bit of a tease. Oh, wow. And Scruffy Cub Chris, do I follow you? I don't. Oh, you're in Illinois. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So. Ah. Cute. Uh, I appreciate his like. Um. You know, it, I think honestly, like he just set up his phone in the corner and then like shot this whole video. But I appreciate the pervy kind of like nature mm-hmm. of like a hidden cam concept. So even though uh, they usually don't have consent involved. So that's a whole other issue. <laughs> oh, geez, Louise. <sighs> oh. He had my consent. Uh, oh, I believe that's called uh. beside the point. Uh, correct. Sure. No. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Moving on into the links, Gary. <laughs> um. So, if you heard the pre-show and you heard me bitching about Netflix, <laughs> 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 um, they have a series that they came out with. Um, which is based on the internet meme. So I feel like this is a little dated, but it's called, is it cake? Mm. So this is different. So if you've seen, um, nailed it Mm -hmm. with Nicole Byer, which rumor has it that there was a kerfuffle recently and that someone walked off the set in a big, like dramatic thing. And, uh, the most recent season is on hold for filming. I'm not quite sure what that story is, but anyways, Ah. So if you've seen Nailed It, where it's a baking competition, Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like that, but it's also elements of a game show mixed in. So these, so the contestants are all legitimate uh, bakers who make cake of real objects and make them, make them look like the real thing. And so they compete against each other and then, um, so there's these like kind of early games for advantage or selection of their of their uh, competitors. And then 
Um, they are given a category, they are given a product, um, they select what they're going to make, and then they spend like eight hours making this thing. And then three celebrities come in as judges to be fooled into selecting which one is the cake. And there's five or six of the exact same item on pedestal displays. But the interesting thing is the three judges have to come to a consensus in 20 seconds. Oh, wow. Super fast decide which one is the cake and there is some lighting manipulation so this show is goof goofy af people i'm just going to tell you right now it is not emmy award winning in my opinion but if you want something to just throw on and binge watch on an on a night on a weekend you might consider it because it's pretty wackadoo like <laughs> i don't know how else to explain it it's wild um it's something different so, uh, yeah, that was something that I watched this past month that I that I ended up binge watching it a night and found it entertaining to see the least. Interesting. Um, and some of, I will admit some of the cakes are uh, fucking amazing. Like and, and just seeing the artistry of what they do, like the tools that they use, the different things that they do to manipulate, because theoretically everything's edible. So, like, you're looking at these these cakes and it's edible, like even though it may not look that way. So it's kind of cool um, when it comes to that. So uh, there's that. Over on Disney+, Plus, if you have not seen and you have Disney+, Plus, I highly recommend you go see Turning Red. Um, it's one of their newest animation films, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've already seen it twice. Mm. Um, it's about uh, May, who is a... A uh, Canadian Asian um, 13 year old in the year 2002. And I say that because it's very specific to the time frame um, living in Toronto. And uh, most of us were around in 2002. Some of you may be young enough that that might have been the year that you were born. Oh. I'm so sorry because then you won't remember like the pop culture reference and stuff that's happening. But it's a pretty wild ride. Um, and it's it's just a beautiful story about a young girl who is entering into puberty. Um, but it doesn't really focus on that, but it's about the awkwardness of being a teen or an early teen and being a, a, a female identifying person and having hormones and like family dynamics and friends and just like, you know, having crushes and like just all this different kind of stuff. And it's kind of wild um, as a ride. And it's, I don't know, it's just really fun. And I very much appreciate that it is like, I think Pixar's uh, first all female um, directed, produced, um, like storied production. Um, and I really, really, uh, love it. And I know that like, there's all these people who have these like opinions on social media about like, you know, the concept of like, you know, talking about menstruation, which is such a small reference in the film. And yes, theoretically the title and some of the other stuff is like allegory, but it's like, you really need to watch it. You need to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is rumor that there may be a second one. So uh, to come because it's been so hugely successful. Um, I will say this for the furry community. Um, I can totally understand if some of them have lost their minds because this is about a young girl who turns into a giant red panda who's eight feet tall. Um, and so there are instances in the film where she's running around with just a tail or just ears or paws like. Nice. So if you know the furry community and like Anthrocon and that kind of stuff, like I totally see how like they would adopt this, like um, because it's just it's 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 very adorable, it's very cute and fun. So yeah, yep. so it's um it's good. I suggest y'all go see it. That's pretty much it for the new stuff this month. Oh, uh. Sorry, since the last time uh, we did a What's Going On, I went and saw The Batman on the ah. big screen, uh, with Robert Pattinson. Um, I want to say this. I was not uh, um, anticipating a great film. I don't know who Robert Pattinson is outside of that he did the Twilight series, which I have zero interest in. So I really was like not sure how I'd feel about him as Batman. Um, but then again... We've had a whole lot of different Batmans over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this. If you like a psychological thriller concept of Batman, you should probably see this film. Um, I thought it was really, really good. But I also liked the Christopher Nolan trilogy. 
Mm. All at once. So this is a very film noir sort of detective-y take. Um, it is early in the Batman like concept. So uh, Bruce is not the Batman that most people will necessarily think of. Um, like, you know, he's, what is his title? Like the world's greatest detective, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does not exemplify that necessarily in this film, um, which I appreciate because that goes to show like you have to have growth. Like you have to learn the tricks of the trade. You have to be like, you just can't instantly be born like highly skilled in all areas, like, in you know, mm-hmm. uber smart or whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I really liked it. Um, and the fact that there's going to be a spinoff series, um, and there's, and what I find interesting is it's either, I think it's going to be a trilogy. I believe Matt Reeves has already shot the second one or is wrapping on production for the second film. Um, and there might be a third one. I'm like, wow, that's, that's fucking ambitious as shit. Um, and the amount of detail that goes into this film and the things that they did, I thought was really, really, really something. Um, yeah. So one of those that I'm still thinking about and, uh, oh, and I loved it so much. Uh, I bought the soundtrack, which mm. is a characteristic for me. Um, but, um, I want to say his name is, uh, Michael Giacchino, uh, is the composer and I just, it's not often that I watch a film and I pay attention to the music, but this one has uh, so much dynamic sound. I was just really like kind of drawn. And so I also bought the soundtrack because I really liked it. Nice. So yeah. Here. And I think it's on HBO Max now. I think uh, I could be wrong. Don't might me be. Um, let me see. Um, it is two hours and 39 minutes. Just be prepared for that if you're going to go see it, mm. um, especially in a theater. Empty your bladder before <laughs> the movie starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it is streaming anywhere yet. I don't think it's, I don't uh, think it's, I think it's still in the theaters, isn't it? Oh, uh, April 19th. Oh yeah, that no, that makes sense. I was gonna say, I'm I'm not surprised to hear that it'll be streaming, like relatively well, soon. And that's not because it, it's a bad movie. Yeah, and it's gonna be on HBO Max because that's where all the DC properties and and Warner Brothers stuff is all on HBO and Max. That's the Disney Plus of Warner Brothers <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> and I will say this. Um, yeah, this is this is a different take on things. Uh, Jeffrey Wright as uh, I think it's Lieutenant Gordon because he's not the commissioner yet. Um, he's really good. Like, it's just so uh, it's just so, so interesting, like stimulating to me in a, a different thing. But then again, I loved Gotham, the TV series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you like a gritty kind of like. World gone to shit. <laughs> kind of like. Mm. atmospheric movie uh, with lots of corruption and bad people and like potential second guessing and stuff like that. I don't know. Like as a person who didn't read the comics, I'm like, wow, oh, okay. I really liked it. <sighs> so this is me. But yeah, HBO Max. Anyway, <sighs> I guess that's it. Mm-hmm. That's the end. Oh, well, anyways, contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 C Well Talk. That's 361 265 8255. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate places the URL. You can join our entourage chat and chat us up by going to tinyroll.com slash telegram dash col after installing and getting your account for Telegram if you don't have one already. Uh, you can also find out when we're planning or recording these shows by popping over to a Google Calendar at uh, tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements, such as it comes a loud shirt, a hat, consent is my foreplay shirt, mug, mug, all of those over on Zazzle, zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, some of those designs, such as the consent is my foreplay, is uh, designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at public at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can also become a patron like our, our patrons that we thank so much 
at patreon.com slash comes out loud you can also send, send us some cash by going to paypal.me slash cubs out loud you can find us on apple Podcasts, google play amazon audible spotify Spotify, or pretty much anywhere else you can find podcasts um you can find me on the internet as box tech box puppy box cub box something or other or Windgem on Twitch, that's W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, where that's where we stream Bears and Dragons. The D&D show where a bunch of snooty-ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub on, oh, that's Theater Cub 79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on Must Bear Related Sites or on Facebook. You can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Getty. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Um, if you want to see the stuff that I post uh, that's of the adult variety, just add three X's at the end. The naughty bits. Mm-hmm. We'll have links to some of his posts that he uh, uh, retweets. Yes, not not necessarily Gary's naughty bits. No, just just naughty things. Naughty pictures from other people. But you know, hey, yeah, you have to pay for access to that, All right? And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night. Ciao for now. <laughs>